In a moment, the first program in a new series, Castle's Corner, starring Roy Castle. First, a word from the man himself. Hello everyone, this is Roy Castle. Earlier in the year, we recorded my radio series, Castle's Corner. And one of my special guests was a dear friend, Eric Morecambe. After considerable thought, I would like this first program to be a tribute to the generosity and great comic genius of Eric Morecambe. Thanks for the laugh, sunshine. It's Castle's Corner. Come and join me in my corner. And like Jack Horner, try a piece of my pie. It's thumbs in, thumbs out, thumbs up. Everybody shout, who's a good boy? 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 It's Castle's Corner. Come and join me in my corner. When on the chessboard, I'm known as a rook. Pawn shops abound me, gallant knights surround me to keep me in check, keep me in check, keep me in check, keep me in check, keep me in check. Me in, check. in castles corner. Thank you, thank you very much, and welcome to the brand new series, Castle's Corner, the program that looks back on my years in show business and asks, why? <laughs> and we're doing it in a new theatre, the Watford Palace. Da, 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 da. Actually, it's like Buckingham Palace, without the nappies. <laughs> and on the show, we've got three musicians, Andy, Bob, and Noel. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Yay! Good lads. They spent some time at the Royal College of Music. They spent a lot more time at the Royal Oak Hammersmith, of course. <laughs> I remember the night I invited a friend to watch my act. And after the show, he gave me the best advice I'd ever been given. He said, pack it in, Sunbeam. <laughs> and here he is tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Morker. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got time for any more? <laughs> hey? I wouldn't do better than that in Luton, I can promise you that. Well, I, I've got to tell you about Eric. You're going to tell me? Yeah. The first laugh I ever had from you oh, yeah? was a, a long, long time ago at the Central Pier Blackpool. 1953. Was it? Yes. Oh, He's yeah. a Cary Grant of radio, you know. <laughs> no, but... young. Only an hour younger than me. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I didn't say any of that here, did oh, it? Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, it's true. <laughs> that fellow you're with, are you in love with him down there? <laughs> are you leaving together? <laughs> you're not going to stop in the lay-by, are you? <laughs> you haven't got the strength, I don't think. <laughs> I have to tell you, does this bring back any memories to you? Are you ready for this now? Yes. Father Bear. Who's been eating my porridge? <laughs> Mother bear. Who's been eating my porridge? Baby bear. Uh. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> it's quite frightening when you think back, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. I was stopped on the way in, you know, tonight. Were you? I was stopped. The fellow said, you know where Chapel Street is? I said, no. He said, all right, I'll mug you here. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in either, was it? I know. No. Know. Now, I've got. I've never played here before. Wait, in Watford? No, in this place. The Palace? No. I played the other place. What's the other place? The Town Hall. Yeah. Yeah, I played there. Mm. That was good. I like that. With Ernie. Yeah. And uh, Max Miller. I played here. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. Really? <laughs> 19, 1946, it was. The charity show. Everybody got paid except me. <laughs> I remember that. Ernie got paid as well, you remember Ernie, the last of the giants? <laughs> I want to take you now back yeah. to America. Ah. Right, this is the... I made Ed... you laugh there, did I? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, this was the Ed Sullivan show. Well, people in the boxes have got no legs. <laughs> that 
exactly that. <laughs> That's not down here, are you? No, no, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> right, so now we are in America on the famous Ed Sullivan show. I wasn't appearing on it, I was just in the audience. And this is where I got another laugh out of you, Eric. <laughs> That's two coming up, is it? <laughs> <laughs> this is 20 years later, this I know, is. yeah. So Ed Sullivan came and introduced you. Well, how did he introduce you again? Morocambi and why? Yeah. <laughs> True that. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I felt like a sea lad. Give yourself a round of applause. Anyway, so we're, in, we're still in America, right? That's a visual one, that you see. <laughs> so, what, we're in America, and I'm out in That's the a audience. trip up to now. <laughs> I'm out in the audience, and Ernie came on with you. Yeah. That's right. And I he carried said, him on, I remember that night. <laughs> he carried you on, right? <laughs> Anyway, what happened was, Ernie said, Well, Eric, here we are in America. Like that, he said. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and he said, Tell me, Eric, who do you like best? The American girls or the English girls? And I said, The American girls. And he said, Why? I said, Because they're here. <laughs> now, as... A, there's another laugh he gave me when he became a director of Luton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not a director there anymore now. I'm a, a vice president. Ah. No, I am, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I get one free seat now instead of four and no aggravation when we lose. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, it's uh, the practical joke, King, because once at our house, is it my house, and the phone rang and he answered it. Picked it up and said, there's no phone here. <laughs> yeah. I never did get that contract. <laughs> Dad's got it. <laughs> yeah. And there was another time we had a, a party. I don't often throw parties. It was a big party. There was a lot of show business and a lot of what you, what you would call civilians there, wasn't there? Yeah. Well? Normal people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I promise you, suddenly, they were all starting to go. And this was early on in the evening. I said, what's the matter? Where, where are you going? And he said, well, Eric's just told us it's all off. <laughs> Everybody left. They believed him. Just him and me left. That's all. <laughs> the whole house. And then, of course, I've got to tell you about the, the town. The, the biggest laugh. Yeah. Was a, he, uh, he said to me, this is a long time ago now, is uh, when Eric and Ernie were guests on one of my televisions. Can you believe that? Yeah, black and white. <laughs> And, uh, and Eric said, there's a girl, she's a fan of yours, and she's staying at our house for over the weekend. She's coming to the show. I'll bring her around to introduce her. Do you mind? Very nice to the last. Wood Green. It was at Wood Green. Wood Green, yeah. yeah. And I was expecting perhaps a... a you weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> <laughs> were you really? <laughs> I thought you'd always had that figure. <laughs> I didn't realise it was fancy dress. <laughs> Just as well, they can't see it. Anyway, I, I was... Uh, where was I? Wood Green. I was at Wood, Wood Green in the dressing room. Um, Shall I bring this young lady around? I yeah, the young lady. Fun of yours. Yeah, I was expecting a, 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 a little lass with braces on her teeth or something who was going to giggle a lot and all that, but he brought this lovely, lovely young lady into my dressing room, and he stood her there, and he just looked at both of us, and he said... Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I was listening. What did oh, I no, say? Right. I forgot what I said. He said... This is Fiona, and she's in love with you. Yes. And walked out. And I locked the door. <laughs> and uh, funnily enough, a year later, we got married. Yeah, uh, to I'm the glad girl. I locked the door. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's 21 years ago now, yep. Eric. So, I couldn't come uh, to the wedding, though, could I? Couldn't get to the wedding. I was up in Blackpool. Yeah. Harry Seacombe became your best man, didn't he? Yes. And, but you're you can't God... find him now, Harry, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Hey? <laughs> He's disappeared completely now. <laughs> it's true. I do pounds, oh, Yeah, that's one you, you said to me once. You said, uh, you said, I've just lost, well, I've just lost two stones. Yeah, got rid of my agent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's, what, but anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, here I am now. I'm married to the same lady. We've got four children. My eldest boy, your godfather to Daniel, remember? Am I? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, I am glad. He, what is he? He's 63 now, isn't he? <laughs> He's 18, actually, and he sent you a present. This is his trombone, Eric. And he sent it with a little message saying, this is all your fault. <laughs> now, oh, great. <laughs> yeah. It works. You're going to play with this, aren't you? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. If somebody locks the door, I don't mind at all. We're going to have a play. Yeah, what would a play? And, well, um, what do you know? What do you know? What do you know? All of them. <laughs> All of them, no worries. Right, don't forget to play into that. No, into that, into that. Right. Uh, I'll start us off then. And as soon as you find out what the tune is... No, no, I'll start us off. Yeah. As soon as you find out what the tune is, join in. Yeah, fine. Okay, you want to start us off? Eh? It goes, goes a one, two, a, a one, one, two, three, four. Two, Ready? No, one, not two, yet, not no, yet. One, no, 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 it's... It's, it's got to be this step. One, two, I want two, three, four. Right? One, two, I want two, three, four. No, wait a sec. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the second number coming up now? <laughs> right. Three. I want two. I want two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Eric Markham, everybody. Uh, don't, <laughs> and, and don't forget, Eric, to get to Luton, it's left at the light, follow the one-way road, first left at the roundabout and under the underpass. I'm you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, where were we now? Oh, yes, yes. One morning. One morning, I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, no chance here. No. <laughs> I hope he finds his way. That, yes, one morning, I woke up and dashed... <laughs> Yes, seriously, though. <laughs> One morning, I woke up and I dashed straight out of the front door for a good deep breath of fresh air, which was unfortunate because I was living on a houseboat at the time. <laughs> As I swam back, I felt a tug at my left leg, so I told the tugboat captain to clear off, and then I got back on board and opened a letter from the local council. And it was a nasty little letter saying that the health inspector was coming to condemn my houseboat. Charming. Castle? Aye, aye, Captain. Is this your houseboat? No, I'm answering the door for a friend. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm worried about the health risk. Well, don't get on then. Now, don't be clever with me, Mr. Castle. I represent the government. Russian? This houseboat spoils the walk for the local residents. You mean they walk on the water? What I'm trying to tell you is that this boat is a death trap. A what? A clapped out old heap. A what? An uninhabitable wreck. What exactly are you trying to tell me? That it's rotten through and through and I'm going to come on and nail a condemned notice on it. <laughs> oh yeah, the gangplank's rotten as well. <laughs> Excuse me, young sir, did you say left or right at the lights? <laughs> Only I finished up in a fast food restaurant. <laughs> So-called because the waiters are on motorbikes. Oh, Eric, it's, uh, it's left at the lights. Thank you. I'm glad you packed it all in. <laughs> then there was the time I got a job as Marvel the Escapologist's assistant. And escapology isn't easy, you know. <laughs> okay, Roy, now you hold your hands together and push. Right, right. Then bend backwards and lift your legs. Right. Okay. <coughs> and now lift yourself up <coughs> and over. <coughs> oh. <coughs> oh. I wish you wouldn't forget your front door key every time we go out. <laughs> Rapidly the years passed by and now my career was going at full pelt. I was only out of work for six days a week now. I needed a break away from it all, somewhere quiet, restful and tranquil. So I signed on as a baggage handler at the British airport. <laughs> and there I got to hear of Mad Dog Swindlehurst's low-cost second-hand holiday parlour. And in no time at all, I was winging my way to a holiday of a lifetime, arranged by Mr. Swindlehurst. It had been a long time since I'd flown in a gypsy moth. <laughs> but I didn't mind. They let me keep the helmet and goggles. But in next to no time, I was back. Oh, Mr. Carvel. Did I surprise you? Oh, a little, but Miss Jones was just going. <laughs> I mean, were you surprised to see me? Well, I, I thought you'd gone on the special bargain break holiday I arranged for you. Yes, I did. It wasn't what I expected. It was 110 degrees in the shade. Oh, well, I mean, what's wrong with 110 degrees? I thought I was going skiing. <laughs> and to make matters worse, I lost my luggage, the string broke and my suitcase fell off the wing. <laughs> well, uh, now look here, apart from those minor problems, was the hotel all right? Terrible. But that was a five-star hotel. I know, I counted them through the hole in the roof. <laughs> 
Yes, well, Mr. Cottle, you did ask for air conditioning. Now, um, what about the food? I bet that was nice. Yes, great, great. If you like your paella Kentucky fried. <laughs> but at least it was peaceful. Oh, no, it wasn't. At night, the noise from the other rooms was unbearable. Banging, shouting till all hours of the morning. I could hardly hear myself practice the trumpet. <laughs> the mere teething trouble. The Casa Swindlehurst is a brand new hotel, and yours was our very first booking. And the last. Oh, no. Oh, we have several hundred bookings for the summer. Oh, it'll be a nice hotel when it's finished. Yes, well, it is finished, mate. Hmm? That's why I've come home. The volcano you built it on's erupted. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, after the roundabout, was it under... <laughs> Or over the underpants. Pass. Yes. Well, I've thought it's all finished. <laughs> okay, boys, and one more time. I remember one winter, I was really down on my luck. No food, no prospects, and no money. And then, one day, I had a visitor. Are you Mr. Castle? Entertainer? Not often. Don't tell me you've come to cut the gas off. <laughs> Good Lord, I'm nothing to do with the gas board. Oh, thank goodness for that. No, I'm from the Inland Revenue. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Now, I believe you're self-employed at the moment. Well, you could say that. Nobody else is employing me. Yeah. <laughs> Only I have to check up, you see. <laughs> My word, you're not exactly living in the lap of luxury, are you? What do you do for food? Wood pigeons. You eat them? No, they bring me crumbs. <laughs> dear, dear, dear. I've had to sell all my possessions. So you've nothing left at all? Just my old gramophone. Mm. Have you considered the Citizens Advice Bureau? Yes. They only offered me a fiver for it. <laughs> I say, what's that black patch going up the wall? That's rising damp. And that black stuff going down the wall? That's falling down. So what's that horrible yellow stuff in the middle? That's the wallpaper. Right, well, I've seen enough. Mr. Castle, I'm going to write back to head office suggesting you get a rebate of 700 pounds. 700 pounds? Mm. Great! Ha! Saved by the tax man. I can use that money to get back on my feet again. Not really. 700 pounds is just the amount you owe us for last year. <laughs> Bye. Merry Christmas. You know that once upon a time I didn't need your show It would have been so easy then For me to turn and go But now there's no leaving you I know that for a fact I'm at the point of no return And for me there'll be no turning back I told myself you'd always be a habit I could break But now a day without your kiss would be so hard to take You just can't get off a train that's moving down the track I'm at the point of no return and for me there'll be no turning back Once I could have said goodbye but that was at the start now I think I'd rather die than be the one to say we'll part. Maybe you will break my heart, maybe you'll be true. No matter what the future brings, I've got to see it through. Maybe your love for me is nothing but an act. I'm at the point of no return, and for me there'll be no turning back. Once I could have said goodbye, but that was at the start. Now I think I'd rather die than be the one to say we'll part. Maybe you will break my heart, maybe you'll be true. No matter what the future brings, I've got to see it through. Maybe your love for me is nothing but an act. I'm at the we were too young to know Honey, now you 
say we don't love each other And my wig is beginning to blow I'm at the point of no return And for me there'll be no turning back You were quite right. I went left at the light, straight on, first left at the roundabout, and under the underpass. So, what are you doing here? I've come back for the car. <laughs> Drum roll over! My thanks to the musicians Andy Grossard, Noel Stevens, and Bob Emines, the writers Charlie Adams and John Lee, and to Charles Collingwood, and a big thank you to my great guest, Eric Morker. Thank you. The program was produced by Ron McDonald and recorded at the Palace Theatre, Watford.